Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, we have quite a few participants. And so what I'm going to do first is to help Cassandra. Um, so she was having problems with um, reboot characters in mouth. So let's start with that. Um, <clears throat> first off, when you build the sphere, it's important to, um, well, if I build it from the top view, okay, notice the orientation of the sphere. It pinches on the top and the bottom. Well, if I'm doing it from here, I can, it's okay, I can do that, but I want it to pinch front and back. <clears throat> so let's make sure that we start with that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to reset everything just because I want it to be a perfect sphere. And again, make sure that it's pinched front and back. And I'm going to fix it and I'm going to um, fit everything to the screen. Okie doke. So from the right view or from the top view really makes no difference. Um, what I want to do is under polygon mode, I want to select the front half of my um, sphere because I'm going to remove that. So to do that, the easiest way to do that is make sure that you're in wireframe number one so that if I select a point, for example, or a polygon, it selects not only the top ones, but the bottom ones. So that's important so that they'll all get selected. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to drag around the front group of the polygons. Now that they're all selected, I can go ahead and I can hit Command X to delete. Now, if I look at this from perspective view, you can see in the texture view that it's just because by default all of the, the polygons are one-sided, I can't see inside of this thing. But if I turn it to the side, you can see that that half sphere is there. Well, the next step is that I want to close that back up before I go ahead and I <clears throat> use the bevel tool to, to create the lip and to build a concave surface. So I'm going to switch from polygons to point down here. Oh, come on. There we go. And I'm going to, again, lasso either from the top view or from um, the side, one of the side views. I'm going to right click and drag around the front row of points like so. And then I'm going to show a gotcha in, a gotcha in a minute. You know, if this doesn't work. And then I hit P for poly. And that fills it. Now I can select, now if I switch from points to polygon, I should be able to see that this polygon is selected. If it isn't, you can always deselect it and then click here to reselect it. And then I'm ready to use the bevel tool. So I hit B for bevel, and then I can right click and I can pull it forward, move the mouse forward a little bit and I can move it out just a little bit. And then I'm going to right click and drag again. And then right click and drag again. And right click and drag it in. And then right click and drag it in. And right click and drag it in. And I'm looking at all the views as I do this make sure that this works for me and pull it in a little bit more maybe even a little bit more then i'm done and i turn off um, b for bevel and then I deselect so kazi um or cassandra i'm gonna allow you to talk um, go ahead and um, unmute yourself and then let me know how you're doing things differently or why it's it's not working for you. Um, after seeing your demonstration, I think I was- Cassandra, you there? Uh, there you go. Can you hear me now? Hello? Is it working for you?
Okay, so I'll get back to you, Cassandra. You know, I'm a presu presuming that you're giving it a try. And then <clears throat> for the rest of you, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to continue to um, talk about multiply tab here and all the tools that are available here. So I'm going to create a brand new layer and I'm just going to go through <clears throat> this and we're going to look at um, different possibilities for you. So the first thing that I want to do before I do that is I have to, if you're going to use a multiply tab, you generally have to have an object first to create, to, to affect. So I'll start with um, under the create tab and I'll just start with a simple box. Okay, and I'm going to go to my numeric requester and I'm going to select reset and activate. So I just have one big square here. That's it. Now we can go ahead and we can zoom out a little bit and we can see what we have here. So I just have a default um, six sided, you know, cube. But let's say later on, um, hold on here. I think, let's see, let me look in the chat room here. Is my mic my, my not working or yours? Um, cause you, I can't hear you. Okay. So if you're, yeah, so while I'm working here, yeah, it was, um, if you were creating the ball incorrectly, then go ahead and give that a shot again. So, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure why, cause you're not muted on my end. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I know why it is. Hold on. I think I'm, I have the issue here. My fault. My bad. Hold on. Go ahead and talk now. Hello? Cassandra? Uh, hello? Hold on. I can hear you. Oh, okay. So, hold on. Yeah. Let me go ahead and turn up my mic a little bit or my, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just after watching uh, your demonstration, I noticed that I was creating the ball from top view, which is why I guess I had the- I Okay, had the there you go. Yeah, that's why it wasn't working. It has to do with the orientation of the, the polygons. So try that while we're working today and see if you have success. Okay, okie doke. Okie doke. So um, back to the, um, the multiply tools. So when we were creating the head for Mike in the numeric requester, when we created the, the cube, let me just go ahead and do this again. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and with a cube selected, or a box, or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go ahead and activate. And remember at the time that you created, if you wanted radial or, you know, beveled edges, but you wanted them all beveled, you could do that from here. So you get that chiseled edge. And then if you wanted it rounded, we could, you know, add rounded segments. So if you were going to build, for example, your next assignment, the toy assignment, if you wanted to build um, paradise, this would be, you know, one possible way of, of doing it. Okay, so that you get that, that built. <clears throat> okay, so all the, all the corners are rounded. So I'm good to go. So if I'm going to go ahead and um, turn that off, because what if you only wanted the corners rounded, or if you only wanted the top rounded, or the sides in the, or the bottom? You wanted to be very specific about that. Well, the rounder tool would be the tool that you would want to use. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to take the radius back off to none. And I'm going to make sure that I remove the segments to one. And let's go ahead and fix the box. Okay, so I hope everybody can see okay. Let's brighten that up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now that I'm ready to go. So let's say, for example, I just wanted to affect the top and I wanted the, round, the top to be rounded around the edges. So the first thing that I'd want to do is select the polygon. And then under multiply, let's select 
the rounder tool. Now we have a bevel, we've used that. Chamfer is very similar to a chiseled edge. So that's another modification tool you can try, but specifically I wanna use the rounder tool or the, what am I saying? yeah, the rounder tool. So I'm gonna come up here and let's look at the numeric requester. And I'm gonna to go to reset and activate. And it looks pretty funky because it goes to 500 millimeters and that's half of what the size of the cube is because it's a one meter cube. So now if I change this like so, notice that I'm getting that beveled edge just as I did before. This is the same as a chamfer. But now if I want it rounded, then I can check uh, rounded polygons and I can round it like so. So now notice that the bottom half remains intact is the original, you know, six sided cube that, you know, with sharp corners, but the top is rounded. Well, that has to do with edges. So what if I only wanted to round off the corners and that was it. So instead, instead of edges, we could select points. Now look what I've got. Now see, notice how it's affecting just the corners. And again, I can change, the, you know, the degree of roundness from here and dramatically affect that. So the rounder tool can be really, really um, effective because in CG, um, you know, computer graphics, the tendency is for everything to be a little too perfect. Corners by nature or edges by nature in the real world aren't perfect. They have slight fillets or rounded edges. And this would be a good way of doing that. Okay, so that's the rounder tool. Okay, so that's one tool that we have there. And again, you can also, let me, um, let's go ahead and turn the rounder tool off. And let's undo that. And instead of selecting, again, the, the polygon or selecting the corners, because you can select just the corners by using points, you can also select edges. So if I select just this one edge and I select the rounder tool, and I switch from points to edges and I activate, notice how it's affecting that, just that edge. So, you know, use your imagination in developing your models. Um, think of them, be, you know, to start with in basic forms, you know, is it most like a cylinder? Is it most like a cube? Is it most like a sphere? And then build off of that. Okay. So that's the rounder tool. So that's, that's that. I think I've covered all the points. Let's turn that off. And again, let's undo. So again, you can either select points, edges, or polygons. In fact, and then you can determine whether you want edges rounded or just the points, the corners uh, to be affected. So next one that we're gonna do um, is I want to show you how to use extrude. So extrude um, can be done any number of different ways. I'm gonna do this. Again, it's a way of adding geometry. I could I, I could extrude from the the um, one of the polygons from my uh, my uh, box, and I can I'll do that. I'll come back to it. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you. You know, think of it. Um, extrude is similar to working with. Um, I don't know how many of you had a play-doh. I never did as a kid, but as a, one of those Play-Doh toys and you would shove the Play-Doh in and you press the handle down and you, you know, depending on the shape that you had on the edge, it would extrude out the shape. Well, that's similar to what we have here. So what I'm going to do here, and it can, you know, be any number of things that you can do. So I'm going to start by selecting a ball and I'm going to do it from the front view. Like so. And 
Um, let's see. I might want to make sure the radius is the same. I'll just make sure that they're like 120 and 120. And I'm going to drop this down from 24 sides all the way down to eight. And you'll see why in a minute. You have to do it this way. No. But I'll go ahead and I'll fix it like so. And now and with points selected, I want to turn this into a little star shape. So I'm going to select this point, this one, this one, and this one. And now I'm going to select resize, which are the size tool, which is to shift H. And then I'm going to pull this inward like so. There's my star. So this right now, turn off size, shift H, deselect the points. And now from perspective view, I want to make sure that I see correctly. Here's my little star. But it's a two-dimensional plane. I want to turn this into a three-dimensional form. Are there other ways of doing this? Yes, but I'm just going to show you how to do this. So let's use the extrude tool. So I'm going to come back under multiply. And we're going to select extrude. And then from the top view, I'm going to click and drag like so and pull this back. And you can see in perspective view our three-dimensional form now. So for some things that might be, you know, a way that you would want to create. It's extremely useful when you want to create three-dimensional type. You start by using the type tool and you create the two-dimensional type and then you extrude it and then maybe add bevels to make it three-dimensional. And then if you want to animate it, you can have it fly through the space or spin around or do whatever you want. But that this is extrude. Now, let me show you the negative side of this. So if you pull this in the wrong direction, and it looks like with the 2020 version, they have fixed this. Because in the past, if you extruded in the wrong direction, um, so if any of you are using an older version, it's possible to see this inside out. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this extrude and I'm going to flip polys. I'm going to hit F for flip. And if you ever get it to look like this, you're looking at it extruded, but you're looking at it from the inside out. So when I, as I move this around, I can never see the outside. I'm only looking at it from the inside because again, we only have one sided polys. So then again, if I hit F again for flip, now I see it right, right side. Okay. So that's the extrude tool. And likewise, if I go back to my cube, again, you can use bevel. I usually use bevel for this, but you can, you know, use extrude. I could select the top polygon. So I got to make sure that instead of points, I have polygons selected. And I can, you know, let's zoom out from the wireframe views. And I'll, ex, you know, select extrude again. And then I'll click and drag. And notice how I'm pulling that out. But in, as I do that, notice that it is. It's inside out now. And that's what I don't want. See that? I'm only looking at it from the inside. So this could present a problem. That's why for this kind of thing, I would, um, I would normally use the bevel tool um, to add the geometry. So I generally use extrude for two dimensional shapes. And then I, when I want to turn them into three dimensional forms, but this will work. I mean, I can go ahead and I can turn off extrude, but then what I have to do is I have to select these polygons right here and it's thinking that we only want to, that, you know, because we're, we're extruding and we're adding up here, that this one is unnecessary, you know, and for bevel, this one would be unnecessary. Um, so I could get rid of this one if I selected this, whoops, see? So what if I were to select all these polygons? So they're all selected. And now if I hit F for flip, now they're selected in the right direction. But notice how these are selected in the opposite way. So I need to deselect 
select this polygon and flip it. But the problem with this is, unless you're going to have something inside this, um, you know, if you're going to have a camera inside, that I have an extra polygon in there that's hidden that I really don't need, that I would probably want to get rid of. So if I undo this, all of this, and I go back to this, really bevel would be a better tool. So if I click B for bevel and just click, and now I hit T for move, and I move it up like so. Notice that, I mean, it, you know, depending on where, where you want this to go, um, it could be straight up, but notice how I've added a slice in there. That's all. Okay, so I've added complexity and added geometry to it. It really depends on what you have selected. So let's go back. Let's go back here. Here's my star shape, and I'm going to undo this a few times. Uh, let's bring that back. Okay. So that was uh, got that chamfer rounder thicken. No, I don't want to use any of those. Why can't I use the lathe tool? So I want to use the lathe tool. Let's turn that off. Let me just do this again. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. And I'm going to go ahead and create and create a little ball from the side, like so. And move this down. Notice that this is off center just a little bit, and there's a reason for that. Now I'm going to switch back to um, um, 24 sides. Okay, and I want to make sure that I have 180 and 180. Whatever size it is, is unimportant right now. There we go. So we got it fixed. There we go. Now notice here under multiply, okay, we have lathe selected. So this is another way of taking a two-dimensional form and making it three-dimensional. So if I wanted to create a, a torus shape, but that does happen to be a, a default form that we could use. Um, but if you wanted maybe one that's only a half, um, half of a donut shape, we could do that. So now if I use lathe and this comes up, now watch what happens. If I come to action and I go to activate, notice how it spins around. Now this is an example of it spinning in the wrong direction. If you look in the perspective view, you notice that we're looking inside it. So I either have to make it go, there's three different ways that I have to do this. Either I needed to flip the polygon ahead of time, um, or I need to go a minus 360 degrees, and now it's correct, or I needed to do it 360 degrees and then flip the polygon afterwards. Now, <clears throat> if you want it to be only partially, um, you know, around like so, then from the top view, notice how I can take this widget and I can, you know, it's, it's a quick way of making a nice bend. Or if you want it, you know, to go three quarters around, this would be another way to make a partial ring. Okay, now notice that you see the little um, facets of the sides, that's because there's only 24 sides. If you want to get rid of that, you either need to hit, um, when you apply a surface to it, that you either assign smoothing to it, or if it's a critical part of your model that you're going to see close up and you want additional geometry, it would be at this time that you would go ahead and you would add s sides to really s smooth it out. Okay, well, I'm going to go back to 24. And well, if you go less, this would be a quick way of making a, a frame, too. That's kind of cool. Well, see that? Um, you know, if you go like so. So that has to do with the number of sides. Any questions so far? 
Anybody? No? Okay. So let's do another one. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to lathe it again. So let's go ahead and select lathe, reset, and activate. But this time, what if you wanted to create uh, like a corkscrew or a spring um, of some sort? Well, then what we need to do, instead of end angle of 360 degrees, we need to do multiples. So let's say I were to multiply that by 10, and I had 1360 degrees. And notice it's kind of spun around itself like so. Okay. So that's not exactly what I want. And again, I need to use the negative because it's inside out. There we go. And this isn't exactly what I want. But what I want at the bottom is that I want to change the offset. So if I change the offset and I move that up, so I'm moving my mouse to the right, like so. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit so we can see this. There's my corkscrew. Now notice the number of sides when it's only 24. It is very, you know, it's like taking a, a straw and bending it abruptly. And if you wanted it even more abrupt, you know, you could reduce it down and look at, you know, the, the kind of shape that you get. Now, if you want it to be a nice, you know, round kind of spiraling spring, then you need to really crank that up. And here's my, my spring. And again, depending on how tight you want the spring or how stretched, you change the offset. You can also change the center of this and the angle of it. Now, I would probably choose to do that afterwards, but that's clicking and dragging from the top. So let me go back here and reset just to get me back to where I was. And then again, you know, anytime you get lost, it's best if you put do that just to reset it. And again, I'm going to go ahead and change the offset and move it back up. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the sides. And again, how many sides do you add? It's really um, depends on whether it's going to be seen from a distance or close up. And, um, you know, exactly what you're looking for. So that is the, um, the lathe tool. The next one we've used before is smooth shift. But I want to show you the difference again between smooth shift and the bevel tool, just to show you what happens, the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave this alone. And I'm going to go to another layer. And I'm going to create a sphere, um, just for the heck of it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and reset and activate, just so that I have a sphere here. Okay, and let's go ahead and Hit A to fit all. So let's say, for example, I wanted to create a, a spaceship, you know, an old, an old style 50s, early 60s um, flying saucer. Um, how would I do that? So one of the things that I could do is I could select a, a couple, a single row of polygons or a couple of row of polygons. So I'm going to go ahead and select, um, make sure that I have polygons selected, not points. Oops, come on. Oops, I didn't want that. Having trouble selecting down here. Come on. There we go. So let's select that. And then I'm going to go to select loop. Okay. And I didn't want all of those selected. So let me do this again. Um, I mean, I guess I could do it that way, but I don't want it that way. I'm going to go ahead and select just a couple of these. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say select loop. There we go. And let's do that again. I'm going to hold down about two or three of these and say select loop. So that spins that around. So if I wanted to add geometry to this, but I wanted it like tentacles that come out of a, a, 
um, an octopus. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna select three, say select loop. And I'm gonna use instead, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the bevel tool. So under multiply, I'll go ahead and come on, bevel tool. I'm gonna go ahead and reset and I'm gonna activate. Now let's go ahead and, and adjust the shift for this. And as I do that, notice that they are all moving out individually, that I've added geometry to each one of those polygons, but they extend as separate entities, as individual polygons, not as a single unit. And if that's what you want, you know, then that's good. Then you would use the bevel tool. But I don't want to use the bevel tool. As I said, we're going to create something called, you know, our little um, flying saucer. So I'm going to undo that. Undo that again. Let's go ahead and redo that. Let's select polygons. Whoops. Well, that was would be if you if you affect it for, with all of them. But there's a better tool for that. That's kind of weird. But you can see what happens. It's kind of weird. Let me undo that. Let's turn off bevel. And I need to select just a, a few polygons and then select loop. But this time, because I want them to all behave as a single unit, I'm going to use a smooth shift. So as I do that and I click, I add geometry. But now watch what happens when I expand it. So now when I change the offset, I can go ahead and I can move it outward like so. But notice how they all behave as a single ring around the edge. And so now what I could do is if I you know, wanted it tapered or that sort of thing, then I could go ahead with that selected. I could go ahead and I could use, um, let's go ahead and use stretch and we'll stretch these down a little bit like so. And then maybe hit T for move and then move it down a little bit like so. There we go. And then when I'm done with that, let's turn off T for move, deselect. Now this is all, you know, single geometry. Now I can hit the tab key and notice how it looks like my little flying saucer kind of disc. Okay. So I hope everybody understands the difference between bevel and smooth shift. They each have their purpose and their function. And it really depends on what you want to do. Do you want to create individual little tentacles or finger-like elements, or do you want them to all behave as a single unit? Okay. So that's smooth shift. Smooth scale is just a, a variation of smooth shift. We also have something called the thicken tool. And this can be very useful too. So let me go ahead and select another layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's create a box. Well, or if you're gonna make a helmet, that would work for that too. But I'm just gonna use a simple box. You know, keep it simple here. Let's go to create, make a box, and let's go ahead, put a reset and activate. Okay. So here we have our box, but what if you wanted an open-ended box and you wanted to give that box thickness? Well, the thicken tool is a very useful tool. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Let me do that again. There we go, turn it off. So from the perspective view, if I, if I select this polygon or any one of them and I hit K for kill or delete, doesn't matter. And now I want it because, you know, this is paper thin, the edges of my box, but I want to give them substance. I want to give them thickness. Well, again, there's a variety of ways that you can do that. I mean, I could have used um, probably smooth shift for that as well, but probably thicken would probably be the best one to use. So I'll select under multiply. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select thicken. And let's go ahead and come in here. And I might have to change this to double-sided, but I'm going to go ahead and with this selected, I'm going to go ahead and select activate. And the amount, you know, I don't know, but I'm going to go ahead and that's too much. 
So let's say it's one meter, let's say 100 millimeters. And that's too much. That's way, oh, there we go. Now we can see it better. Okay, so now I have my open-ended box, don't I? Okay. So that gave that, all of those polygons additional thickness. And that works very nicely. It's, you know, when you're making helmets and maybe you create a nice individualized form that you metaformed or whatever, but you want to be able to look inside and to give it thickness. Well, the thicken tool would be the one that you would want to use. Okay, so that's another useful one. Extended plus is very extended to um, extrude. So I won't cover that today. I want to cover all of the main ones for us today. The next one I think that you would want to know about would be the magic bevel. So I'm going to, this is, again, I was talking about an octopus-like shape. Um, let's go ahead and let's select um, under create. Let's go ahead and select a ball. Reset and activate. And instead of um, 12 segments so that I have kind of even, I'm going to make it 11. There we go. So I can go in in the middle here. So let's see what we have here. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the middle row this time. And again, I'm going to select a loop. And this time, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select, and, and I want to use under multiply, I want to use the magic bevel. Now notice that all of these, and I can pick this off of all of them, but with the ones that are selected, if I go ahead and I can control here, the precision and the scale and the spin, okay, we can go ahead and we have extrude. That's what I want. Um, align to path. Well, that could be true. And let's say from the side view here, if I pull one of these out, see how it tapers and gets really small? Well, that's because I have the control here under scale. If this were to change to 100%, then I could do that. But if I have that and I shrink it down, notice how it tapers. I can also, it's aligning it to the path, but I can also come in here and right now it's set to um, extrude. Well, I can also edit the path. I can come in here and um, let's move this over a little bit and I can change these nodes and I can move the path up or down and I can add nodes and I can remove nodes so think about this. This is, would be really useful for creating the tentacles on, um, uh, you know, an octopus. Or if you were making a tree with branches, um, that would be useful for that too. Okay. Um, there's an exercise a demonstration that I have later on in the semester that covers organically building a cup. It's just very simple. Okay. So this can go in any number of weird directions here. Okay. And if you ever get confused, just go back to um, change from edit path to extrude. And we can go back to reset. And it just takes us back. Okay. Now, I wanted all of these selected. So, but if I come from here and I click and I drag and I pull them out, you can see that I can create my little octopus shape. I'll probably need more than eight. And it probably helps by selecting, you know, the, depending on the view that you have. As I said, this is also if a trunk of a tree and I'm, you know, pulling it out and I'm making these. 
So there we have it. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and fix that. And again, if you want it to look mechanical or machine made, you leave it alone. But instead, if you want it to look more organic, then you hit the tab key and notice how I have, I don't know, maybe I'm making my coronavirus here. Weird, huh? But that would be how you do that with the, the magic bubble. Okay. So we have a few more things that we can cover today. And there are more under here if you want. We have the extender tube if you want to create rows, if you want to. Um, let's do the, the rail bevel today. Let's do that. Let's see how much time we have today. Because this is covering a lot today and I want you to be able to, to try some of these out because it's amazing how you can start with a single um, very simple geometric primitive and um, turn it into something totally different um, by using these tools. So let's reset this. And I said I was going to create um, under more here. I wanted, um, okay, what I need to do from the front view, let's say you wanted to create a, um, a hose or a bent, um, a bent wire or something like that. Well, this is almost like a, a Boolean function that we'll get to very soon. Um, but it's a two-step process. You need to first create a path for yourself for this to extrude. So um, what I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to create the disk because I'm going to create a, a bent um, wire. So from, let's say, from the back view or front view, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to create, come on, I'm going to create a disk. You could use a ball tool, it really doesn't matter. Make sure that they're the same so it's nice and round. And it can be any shape, it doesn't matter. I'm using um, a, a disc or a circle, but um, it could be anything that you want. Okay. So this is in the foreground. And now I need in the background, so I'm going to click here and I'm going to put that disc in the background. Now what I need to do is under create down here, what I want to do is I want to sketch and I'm going to start at this point end point here and I'm going to click and drag like so. Okay. And now from the side view, I want to really mess this up a little bit so you can really see I've got it wavy, but I want it to go up and down as well. So you can really see, and if this one, if you wanted to follow this on a curved path or whatever, you could you could do that. But I'm going to go to modify, and I'm going to select the drag tool, and then I'm going to move some of these up and down, like so. Okay. So now this is going in all sorts of directions here. And it might be a little bit too tight, so I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit. So to stretch it out, what I need to do is I'm going to hit H for stretch. And I want it to be from the location, not of the center. So hold on here. Yeah, I've got stretch. I want it to be the location, not the center of the selection, but the mouse. So I'm going to go ahead from here. I'm going to stretch the whole thing out just a little bit. Because I want to make sure that the, it follows the path correctly. So I don't know how well you can see in here. But here's my disk in background. And here is the path in the foreground. Well, now I need to switch. I need to go the disk in the foreground and the path in the background. And I want the disk to follow that path. So now under more, I'm going to use, whoops, sorry, under multiply, under more, I want to use rail bevel. I'm going to go ahead and select action. 
and I'm going to reset and I'm going to activate. Come on. Why aren't you working here? And let's switch. Let's go from Yeah, it should be round bevel. How about that should work. So let me try this. Let me go back. Let me move my shape here a little bit. Let's put this in the background again, unless they've changed the function of this. And let's try again. Let's go under more rail bevel. Um, so, oh, it's doing something different than what it used to be. This is not what I wanted. No, nope, this isn't what I wanted. This isn't what I wanted at all. My apologies. Um, I'm going to come back to that. So, oh, I'm sorry. I want a rail extrude, not rail bevel. There we go. There we go. Okay, so rail extrude, not rail bevel. So I'm going to select automatic uniform lengths, uniform knots, and let's go ahead and default number of knots is 20. And then I click and there you have it. Notice how that circle made my little worm like shape. So it doesn't look much like a, uh, a tube anymore, but if I were to change the size of the, of the disc, whoops. So let's turn off, um, where did I have it? I don't want rail. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit shift H to change the size of this a little bit. And I want it from the center of the selection. Should change it down a little bit like so. You can see, so it's really pretty teeny tiny. And then turn off shift H and then let's go back again. And let's go under multiply, rail extrude. There you go. So that's beginning to look more like a hose or something like that that follows that irregular path. So you have to know in advance what you want this to be because you can't edit the path afterwards. Um, you can, but not with you don't won't have much control. Okay. So my apologies, that was rail extrude, not rail bevel. Yes, there we go. Okay. So let's try a couple of others for you before we end today. So I'm going to go to another layer once again. And let's say you wanted to create array, an array of columns or you wanted to clone something. There, um, there are kind of variations of the same tool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start and let's say that you're building for your final project, you want to build a Parthenon or something like that. And you're going to make us, you make one column and then you want a series of columns. Um, and you don't want to have to place them individually. You want to do them all at once. So I'm going to go ahead to go to create and let's go to disk. And let me recenter everything. Let's create from here. Like so, and here's my column, like so. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now what I want to do is I want to create a whole slew of these. So there's various ways of doing that. So we're going to go under multiply again. Notice how many tools that we've used in the multiply tab and there are many that we still haven't used yet. Well, let's start with the clone and then do an array. So if I do a cl the clone, you have to ask yourself, how many clones do you want? So let's say I want five clones because I want a total of half a dozen. 
And then do you want to offset it along the X, Y, and or Z? So let's say I only want to offset it along the X. So I'll offset it two meters off the X axis. And then do you want to scale each one of these as you go or not? Or do you want to um, affect the rotation as they each with each clone or not? Do you want to change the center or not? So I'm just going to do one variation, one variable, and that's it. I'm going to offset it along the X. And as soon as I click, notice what I have here. I have duplicates of all of them equidistant along the X axis. So again, I encourage you to try, you know, one, one variable at a time and see what you get. The other one that could be kind of cool too is that, um, again, if you want not clone, but you want to create an array. Now, they've changed this a little bit and it's really kind of nice. So notice that we have a count of three and three. Okay, so let's change that. Let's change that to six. Okay, that's three along the X, three along the Z, but maybe I want, this would be for your, the columns that you're gonna create in the, the Parthenon, okay? Let's say we want six that way. And before you know it, you have a whole array of these things. And then you can control the distance apart, X, Y, and Z. Okay. Now you can do this um, rectangular or you can do it radial. So let's go ahead and reset everything. I'm going to reset. And let's decide instead of three and three, maybe I want them to all be placed in a circle. So I want the count to be, let's just do the X and leave the count along the Z to be one. And then I'm gonna do radial, okay. And now let's go ahead and we have an eight count. So let's go ahead and move this like so. So here's the center of our circle. And notice how all of them are equidistant around that radius. So again, um, they, you know, you could make each one of these individual and copy paste, copy paste and move them. But this is just the more efficient and this is way of doing this and a more accurate way of building this. And at the same time, um, this would be used extensively for, you know, I mean, there's a lot of fun, you know, functions that this could be used for, but for, you know, architectural purposes. Okay. We've run up against our hour today. Um, let me see if there are any questions for that you guys have. Um, any questions from any of you? No? Okay. Well, you know, we can keep going because there's other things that we, we're going to, that I'll cover on Wednesday. The knife tool, um, connect, subdivide, those things. We've already used a few of them, triple. Um, again, a lot of them are variations on a theme. But I think I've covered quite a few today and I encourage all of you to try them out. Especially for those of you who at the moment, you know, I mean, if you're caught up and you're, I noticed that some of you are done with your reboot character and that's okay, but um, I've made, I, I've, the goal is to have it completed by the end of the, the week. So if you want to go back and revisit it and, and to refine it a little bit, you can. The only thing that I noticed with some of the tables and lamps, which have been graded, is that um, you probably need to play with lighting a little bit more and not be afraid of that. You, know, you can always reset and create new um, layouts, you know, new scenes and that sort of thing. But um, that lighting can be, make a huge, huge difference. So, um, you know, you don't want things too bright, too dull. It, well, it depends. Um, if you want an evening scene and you want, you know, then you do want it to not to be lit quite so much, you know, not overkill. Okay, 
So we'll cover mirror. We covered clone and that. We did um, array. Um, there's a whole bunch of these are always hidden. You know, have the double helix. Um, just there's just a slew of these things that we could go over. So I'm covering over, you know, covering some of the basic ones that I use frequently. Um, but um, there are many, many more. No questions? We're all good for today? Okay. Well, if we're good for today, then um, we'll, I, I've already taken roll for all of you who are here. So I can go ahead and I can stop um, recording and I'll say goodbye for now. And, but if you want to hang around or if you need any help, um, I'll stick around until you guys log off. Okay, so um, this is for those of, for everybody who isn't here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop recording now. And um, again, if you have questions like Cassandra did, please don't hesitate to email me. And we can work on it in a private one-on-one um, uh, -on -one, uh, um, Zoom meeting. Or if you can attend this one, then I'll try to do it for everybody so that everybody can see what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye for now, and then I'll just go ahead and